Let's roll the tape. President and Chief Product Officer, Cisco G2 Patel, a regular here, by the way, on the 6.5. Thank you so much for taking some time. First of all, I just want you to know, because you may not know this, G2, but every week, Pat and I have this segment in our podcast called The Flip. And it's like where we simulate a debate and we'll pick a topic like should Intel, uh, should the government sponsor Intel or not? And we have to debate either side. And even if we don't believe it, we debate each other. We go after it with, with, with one another. But I win every week. And so it got really boring. And so when we have a guest, when we have this segment where we bring you know, someone like you on, and we don't bring many people on, we skip the flip that week. So I'm super happy because I was just, you know, did you ever get tired of winning? I'm, does, I'm does, of does Patrick think you win every week or do you think you win every week? Thinks. I'm tired of winning and I've convinced myself <laughs> that I've won. But speaking of winning, G2, um, great print. I mean, I'm pretty sure it was a beat on all, on all ends. And, uh, you know, I just, first and foremost, give me, a, give me a little inside baseball. Give me a little Cisco inside baseball about the quarter. Look, we had a strong quarter. And firstly, I'd like to say, I think we've got an amazing uh, team of people that are working really hard. And thank you to everyone for working as hard as you are to, make, to deliver an amazing quarter and an amazing year. You know, we had product orders grew 7%. Uh, and it was solid growth across all the geographies. We had, you know, our Q4 revenues were up 8%. Uh, you know, revenue, gross margin, operating margin, we're all on the high end of the guidance range. So overall, amazing quarter. Um, we, have, uh, we have to continue to kind of make sure that we, um, uh, we keep innovating. I think in my mind, the way that this thing happens is you just continue to relentlessly keep innovating. I think the uh, AI infrastructure demand is very robust. Um, and that's probably the if you were to think about the one of the highlights of the quarter was that we AI orders exceeded 800 million for the quarter. And so, um, and we can talk more about that. Yeah, I, I do want to talk about that because that's been probably one of the things that I've been pouting the most about is all these tech companies making an AI play that will not share AI's impact on their business overall. So they talk AI. They tell stories, they sing songs, they spin tales, but then it's like, well, how much revenue is this actually changing? And in some cases, the AI revenue is only replacing old revenue. For other businesses, it's growing, it's incremental. And the number you came out with, which was I think about 2 billion in the year and about 800 million in the last quarter, um, AI infrastructure on the back end that's basically supporting this build out. And that, by the way, if I'm not mistaken, two times what you had expected? Yeah, so we had set the target of a billion dollars in orders uh, and product orders for the year. Um, we did in Q4 alone, 800 million, and we did about 2 billion for the year, over 2 billion for the year. And so that was um, double our original target. And, you know, the, the reality is AI has infrastructure constraints. It has a trust deficit and it has a skills gap. And we're helping with all three. You know, so when you start thinking about infrastructure constraint, like what are the constraints? There's constraint for power. There's not enough power in the world to go out and satiate the demand for AI. There's constraint for compute. Um, and there's a constraint on network because as these agents start getting to be more and more prolific and as they start operating by them um, autonomously by themselves in longer and longer periods of time, the inherent demand for networking is going to go up, especially as the use case of computer use gets to be more and more prominent where agents are using a computer just like a human would use it. And if you have 10 agents per human, and then these agents are working seven by 24, that's like the capacity of 30, you know, kind of 30 humans um, that got added for every human that you have. And so there's a huge amount of upside on, um, you know, just uh, fulfilling the network demand. And that's going to have to Organizations are going to have to rethink their network infrastructure, both in the data center as well as in campus branch, especially as you have physical AI and robotics and all of that. You're going to need to have networking on the edge. Well, let's talk about another thing that I, I think Cisco has done really well, and that's security, G2. I know this is near and dear to your heart, but AI, especially in the enterprise, has moved a little slower, you could argue, than, say, consumer AI. And there's a lot of challenges. There's, there's obviously building out the network. There's the complexity of enterprise IT environments. There's the need to keep data 
private, secure, compliant, governed. Uh, Cisco's really taking an active interest in that. Uh, I think you landed on our, um, you know, on our recent Cyber 7 report, by the way. That's right. um, Thank you for that. We see the innovation and the, the growth, but talk a little bit about- That was really good content, by the way. You folks are really thoughtful in the way that you've done, um, you know, some of these dialogues and discussions. They're, they're, they're very substantive, so I appreciate you doing that. We're, we're trying to help the market really understand the kind of what's the underpinnings of, of innovation, disruption. And, you know, there's so much, uh, I call it maybe the right word is domain knowledge, provenance in a company like Cisco. Understanding an enterprise's IT needs to transform, it's not the same thing as just, hey, built on NVIDIA from day one, from zero, with no backbone, no data, no lineage, no governance, no compliance. But of course, Cisco securing the network, AI is only going to make that harder. So it seems like such a great opportunity. It's actually, it's it's a great opportunity. It's also very natural as an extension for Cisco. And it's very timely given what's happening in AI. Because if you think about it, um, one of the big requirements of AI is low latency, high performance, um, so that you can make sure that there's no idle time for the GPU uh, and the packets are moving fast. Now that's actually a very important thing. One of the things that contributes to low latency though is security has to be baked into and fused into the fabric of the network. And so, you know, when I say that there's a trust deficit right now within the industry, with AI, what I mean by that is most people are afraid of what the implications of AI would be because these models that everything is built on, all the applications are built on, are by definition non-deterministic, they're unpredictable. And so safety and security is really important because you have to figure out a way that you can validate whether a model is behaving the way that you want it to behave. And then when it doesn't, you have to have runtime enforcement guardrails. and for the millions of applications that are getting built, you can't expect everyone to build a cybersecurity stack. That's just not how the industry has evolved in the past. And so what you have to do is you have to make sure that there's a common substrate for security across every model, every agent, every application that anyone builds. And that's what Cisco brings to the table is we can provide that common substrate of security fused into the fabric of the network so that AI is not only low latency, but that low latency is when you have security embedded in a switch, what that allows you to do is it reduces the latency for how how quickly the packet can get inspected too. And so there's just a ton of benefits to these things when the architecture shifts occur. And this is a it's this platform shift with AI is creating an architecture shift on security and it's creating an architecture shift on the network side. And that's where we're at the forefront of both of those. So let me wrap up with one thing because I know we only have a few minutes and of course you know I'm a big fan of silicon and you have a product. Sometimes I think that doesn't get enough attention, Silicon One. We always talk, you and I, both private and public, about kind of these three sort of rate limiters of AI. One's compute, uh, one is energy, and the third is the network. And so you have this full stack architecture for networking, Silicon One, that you use at Cisco, but you also provide this and i think sometimes people don't even realize that cisco's in the semiconductor business in the silicon business talk a little bit about that business and what you see in terms of that business and the opportunity there look i think one of our most strategic things that we've done that i i, I had nothing to do with by the way i give all the credit to chuck and team on that one was the fact that we got into the silicon business uh and silicon a64 networking specifically is what i mean by that and so so if you think about it we are one of the very few companies that builds our own silicon, builds our own systems, builds our own OS, builds our own security platform on top of that. We have our own observability platform with what we are doing with Splunk. We have our own data platform. We've got our own models that we build, and then we've got our own applications that full stack, hardware, software, um, silicon systems, all of those pieces working together harmoniously is very strategic. In fact, I would say, you know, one of the beauties of what this allows the industry to benefit from us, us being in the silicon business in Network A6 is they have choice. You know, you don't have to be beholden to just a few, but you have, you have another vendor that you can provide, have as a choice. And that's been one of the most strategic, uh, you know, vectors for Cisco is we're not just a reseller or someone silicon. We make our own silicon. We make our own systems. We make our own, own, own uh, OS and software. So, and by the way, Martin, who I know you know, 
uh, the gentleman that runs our silicon business has done a fantastic job over the course of the past couple of years and we continue to keep getting better and better and better at it so you should know that the future is very bright um for cisco with silicon and it's it's one of the most important kind of dynamics of our business yeah we uh are tracking it closely as you know and continue to think it's a uh, an opportunity for a lot and by the way it's whether it's a customer whether it's an investor i mean underneath a lot of the networking uh, infrastructure that's out there sits silicon uh, from cisco and at the same time i think that companies that build their you know we, we we all get super excited about google building its own ai chips and we get excited about uh you know all this custom well you're doing for networking in many ways and have been by the way a lot longer than they have what these compute companies are doing and it's very much part of that ai story gt we're gonna have to have you back uh you, you had something? You want to say something quick? Or you, I just you... wanted to say one thing, which is if you think about our structural advantages right now at Cisco, I think it's important for people to understand this. First one is we actually make our own silicon for the network ASICs. The second one is we have fused security into the fabric of the network. We're the largest networking company in the world. We're one of the largest security companies in the world. And the fact that those two coming together is very timely given the AI movement. And third is we essentially are able to serve the breadth of our capability from networking to security to data with Splunk, all tied into a unified platform, is something that's very hard to replicate by our competitors. Those are the three big structural advantages in my mind, our breadth, our fusing of security with the network, and our silicon. Thanks for having me, Daniel. G2, we'll have you back soon. Thanks for joining us for this off the record.